All right. Hopefully I... Oh, I forgot. Yeah, hold on. I have a, I have a little stand on this thing now, so I... <laughs> Hopefully this isn't too far. No, I should... Let me hold on. Hold on, y'all. All right, this should be perfect. But yeah, um, I just got a little jolt, so I just wanted to use that to talk about some shit. I guess it's the, this is the next episode in the podcast, but and it's been a while since I've done one, but maybe this is a good opportunity to do that. Just talking about like meditation and like feminine energy and why... Um, we shouldn't be scared of feminine energy, why men shouldn't be scared and why it's important for everybody. While I'm sipping on my Lebanese tea, by now I'm just really proud because I done put so many people, um, onto Lebanese tea. So I'm just happy that, you know, they can experience the joy (laughs) of this delicious drink. And it's a really cool drink, too. You know what I mean? Um, this is my way to relax. But, yeah, so, so uh, okay, so I wanted to start off with the story. I have a friend, right? I haven't talked to him in a while, but we always used to chop it up and kick it. Whenever we would link up, you know, he would spark. He, he would bring, I'm, I'm not, you know, exposing him or whatever. But, you know, he, 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 he would bring his paraphernalia and and he you know he would he would light he would light his joint right and then he would just get to talking and uh i just thought it was so cool how you know after he would you know hit his joint like two three times four times five times however many times you know how he would just start like disseminating all this information that he's that he's learned about whatever topic we was talking about and, um, you know, he's, he's really big in like astrology and, you know, how it relates to the personal life and, you know, um, just like the forms, things of that nature. And I always used to just listen. And it's just like, wow, like he's he's really studied this. And he was big into music, too. Um, it amazes me how astrology plays so much in music, you know, that, you know, people take such a huge influence from it. It amazes me. I'm going to keep it a beam. I have a struggling relationship with astrology. One, because I, I don't really know all the terms. I feel like I, I know enough to kind of like get by. But like I'm, I'm not I'm not like a I'm not as much as a student compared to my friends. But, uh, you know, I'm I, sometimes I'm just a fly on the wall when I'm, you know, when I'm listening. And uh, if something piques my interest, I'll go research and look it up. But I digress. Right. Um the point I'm trying to get back into is that, you know, like he had a method just to be able to enter his flow state. And that was kind of his way of like relieving himself of all the information that he had learned, um, you know, ab- about that one thing. And now he had finally, you know, found a place to put that information. And, you know, I believe that as much as we absorb information, we have to shed information too. It's just the way of how we get more information. Um, we're like memory cards, you know, I think that's the way that we really operate and function. And so, um, when we use that method and that technique, it it just helps things go faster. I, I think a part of the reason why people get bogged down about things is, is because they, it, it's, you, you're literally holding so, you know, something in, like you're holding so much in to the point where, um, y- you can't really move past it. I, I think it's part of the reason why, why people, you know, do, um, like sports and, and have like an art form to go to. But honestly, I think it's the reason why a few people like myself just be getting into so much at one point in time because now you just kind of realize the relationship between um, energy and medium. And being able to to really like 
navigate that energy to where you want to go. Um, you know, I, I understand for a lot of those practices, a lot of people follow like the lore or the aesthetic of, you know, these things, which is fine. But however, these things all have practical uses and functions and should be regarded as such, because once you get to where the source of that thing is, they're just going to break it down to you simple and plain. I feel like, you know, and maybe this is just, you know, the American in me, but we just have a 10, we, we just have a, uh, a tendency to, to really, you know, like try to market things. And that really bothers me because at its source, although, you know, it's a part of our lives, it shouldn't overtake our lives. I I think that's why I'm so anti-consumerism about a lot of things. Like, I I really just want to enjoy things for what they are. And and that's what kind of grinds my gears, Um, you know, when when things, when, when it's always a conversation about monetization or like paying for stuff and it's just like man like but this is America <laughs> in the words of Donald Glover but yeah um you ain't got to worry about paying for this <laughs> I'm going I'm gonna give it to you for the free cuz cuz I rock with you and you rock with me because you're here but um yeah back to my point right so you know my my friend just had his method to be able to you know, recenter himself. And, you know, that, that was, that was the thing that got him into the meditative state or, you know, the, the flow state, right. The relaxed state. And it's practices like, you know, being able to smoke and and smoking has a negative, you know, um, outlook on it, but shit, the Native Americans back in the day, th- that's how they stopped war, you know, between each other. They would smoke. They would smoke with each other. Hey, man, you want to stop the killing? Yeah, I want to stop the killing. <laughs> Come to the powwow. <laughs> Come to the drum circle. <laughs> we finna smoke something. And we'll talk about our problems. And it worked. You know, the, the, this country treated them so bad, but it worked. That that was, they found out how to how to do it amongst themselves, you know. But it's important to have, you know, a, a thing that allows you to, that allows you to, to kind of just shed, you know. Um, we often can forget that a thought and emotion, um, well, emotion is a thought, you know. Emotion spurs from a thought. Energy, thought is energy, you know. Thinking requires energy. So it's all energy, you know? Um, But just how we're programmed and just how we're conditioned and and, and even on a genetic level, you know, um, these are the things that we just end up doing, but sometimes we get caught up in it to the point where we don't question, take a step back and analyze it. Um, And some people can be autonomous, but for others, Ooh, this car just ran over a medium, but for others, you know, it's, uh, it's imperative to reflect and it's imperative to just have that moment to step, take a step back and be the observer. And that's what it's all about, getting back to observation, detaching, so that you can be able to recenter yourself. Because the flow state is the state of the observer. It's the, it's the state of the watcher. Or just the state of rest, really. The state of rest is, is the state of the watching. And that's and, and the big analogy, or, or I guess the 
the big uh, symbolism in that is like if you ever watch the the Marvel stuff, um, I forget Bro's name, but the Watcher, like when he says, "Hey, I, I made a sacred pact not to, you know, uh, come on Earth and intervene," and and it's because that would affect his job at being an observer. He's now a participant, which means that. Um, he's not doing his job the way he needs to in order for the rest of the universe or the body to work. It's it's just a big, you know, it's, it's just a big, uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> it, 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 it's just a big analogy for, to me, um, for, you know, the body or just the eyes. The eyes can't be the hand. The hand can't be the eyes. Let the eyes be the eyes, and then everything else can be what it can be. But th- the moment you start to displace purpose, um, it causes stress. And it's okay to stress, but you have to remember that um, if you stress for too long, then it becomes a different thing. And so the process that allows you to come back from that different thing and come back from that stress is the meditation, right? And that can be done by using feminine energy. A lot of people think that, you know, feminine energy is is just for women. It's just for females. Um, But it's not. It's for males. It's for men. It's for everybody in between. It's for everyone. And so, you know, and it's... And, and this is the thing, too. Um, like, people aren't just made up of masculine or feminine. We're all a mixture of both of those elements. And so once we understand, you know, what they mean to us, once we understand what they are, then we can develop a relationship with those things that allow us to have a better understanding of ourselves in total and to be able to, you know, uh, reach our goals better in life and, and set intentions and, and, and get to those intentions that allow us to do it in a pure, clear way. And to me, that's important. Because I, I think that's the idea situation we all want to be in. You know? Um, once once we get to that goal, you know, we have all these lessons, but honestly, they're just things that you know, they're just things we've observed um, jumping from one state to another. And, and that's how I see it in, 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 in a, you know, in a simple way. Um, an example might be, okay, you know, I, I was driving and, you know, I, I noticed that when I have loud, loud music, I'm very distracted you know, and so I have to ensure that if I really want to focus on try, trying to read a menu at a restaurant, at a drive through I need to turn down my music because I, I don't focus it as much as I feel like I need to. I'm trying to do both of those things at the same time. I, I, I need to cut out one. But, um... Back to what I was saying about, you know, feminine energy. Everybody can use this, you know, because everybody has it. Um, It's everything everybody possesses. More than likely, we use it more than we realize. Um, You know, our, our, our bodies aren't meant to just move, you know, one way. We, we move 10,000 different ways, you know. Um, some parts of our body due to our, our work culture, our lifestyle culture, don't get to express themselves as much as they really should. 
And so the body adapts, but now, you know, due to not stretching enough or due to, you know, um, not moving enough, um, other parts of the body have to compensate. And so to eliminate that overcompensation, you know, we implement these practices such as, you know, going for a jog or doing yoga, stretching, you know, just, just been dancing really, um, to, to just get back to being the observer. I like that analogy that um, Naruto had back in the day. And I kind of remember this from way back. I, I don't know why, but I remember um, they were at the tuning exams for, for anybody who watches Naruto when they were children. They were at the tuning exams and they had the, the writing um, in, entering one of like the halls or something. And Sakura w- was reading and, and she was talking about heaven and earth like you know, if, you know, and, and she was breaking it down and she was saying, you know, if you have a lot of heaven, then you need to work twice as hard to implement the earth and vice versa. Um, if you're very earthy, you need to work twice as hard to implement the heaven. But, you know, it, it was it was just a breakdown about body and mind and, and just balancing the two. And, um, you know, for those who, who are in, you know, we tend to get in our heads a lot. This is, this is the way, th- these are ways that, that we can ground ourselves. And this is the original theme that I've been trying to hit the, the whole time while I'm hitting all these like subtopics is just being able to ground, you know, being able to just, um, you know, be here, be in the physical, um, our brains are physical things as well. So when you exercise, you're you're also increasing that that blood flow, that blood circulation in your brain, um, which a lot of people, you know, go to the gym for, and and, and that's the thing um, that they use to balance that out. I'll I'll tell you a story too, personally. Like the other week, like I, I was just stressing, I was just going through it, and. Um, I felt better <laughs> after leaving the gym. Like, like I, I hit all the machines that I wanted to that day, and uh, I just felt really good. And I'm just like, wow, it, it feels like my problem does not exist. My problem still existed. <laughs> but I was in a state, uh, I was in a better state, a state that allowed me to just see it as what it was. And, and I think when we're, we're just focused on whatever it is uh, for so long, that we we give that problem a different type of value. Sometimes it's needed so so we can learn the lesson that comes from you know for it once we get on the other side of it. But at the same time, um we should remind ourselves that the problem's gonna be as big as we make it. And all problems don't need to be big. <laughs> problems are already, you know, big. So you know, we should just acknowledge them for what they are, you know, and, and they're only a problem because we see it as a problem. It may not be a problem. It it actually sometimes. And, and, and I feel kind of bold saying this, but my, my stomach is, is telling me to say this um, nine times out of 10. The things that we consider problems w- w- once we finish them are going to set us in a position that allows us that allow us to, um, you know, like get ahead in life. And I think what's really cool about, you know, that too is is, is once you find your solution, you can pass that solution on to other people. You know, who may not have a solution, who may not have a solution for themselves yet. That that can that can be a guide stone. That can be a stepping stool for them. You know. That can be a key for them. Uh, I talk about keys a lot uh, <laughs> in, in in my music, but really, I'm just referring to knowledge and information and, and just advice and, and important things that people have given me along the way. Um, 
Yeah, and 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 I and I just love it. I I I I I just love that word key. Key. It, it's a thing to access a certain part, you know, to access a door that opens something that allows, you know, things to keep unlocking and keep unlocking. But in order to access certain doors, you, you just have to have the right key. You know, energy, in, you know, energy has a lot to do with doors. You know, um, you have to unlock a lot of different doors to access different energies. But that's another conversation for another time. Uh, I'm trying to get back to the feminine energy. But I, I hope, you know, I'm coming back full circle and that I'm not losing y'all. Um, I do like the drift. And, and now I need to ground this conversation. But yeah, so, um, you know, you know, w- w- once we find those practices um, and, and and sometimes we'll have to try a myriad of practices but once we find it we should use it and use it and implement it in our lives for the rest of our lives um the only time we should drop it is when we find another practice that allows us to you know um get more out of ourselves or, or bring back you know bring us back to to the center, bring bring us back to a neutral state, bring us in a flow state that, that allows us to do things automatically. Uh, and that's the way. We want to be so in control of this experience. And then we have to just realize that the only control that we have is over ourselves. And once we can find and keep ways to, to keep us as the observer in our lives, not necessarily saying that we have to let time go by and pass, you know, pass us by, but just saying that, you know, let's just remember that we're watching, we're watching people, we're watching ourselves. Um, and it's all about mindfulness. It's all about intent. Everything in this world has intent from the building, the way the materials are, you know, propped in the building to, you know, the different parts of animals, you know, like they're all purposed. So, you know, there's, there's a joy in purpose. There's also a joy in non-purpose, but, you know, um, it's good to have a balance between the two. And that's what it's all about is just having that balance. That That's, that's why I speak about the feminine energy you know, is, is the balance. Some of us have a lot of feminine energy and, and we have to balance that with more masculine energy, more structure, you know, in our lives. And that's how we, you know, are able to keep stability. And and I think that's another thing to talk about too. It, it stability to me doesn't just look like a solid rock. It doesn't look like just a solid foundation to me stability also looks like balancing stability to me also looks like flexibility and so i i think w- once you're able to combine foundation and flexibility in a way that allows you to you know move in you know in moderation and not over or under move or even when you over move and under move, if that's a word, um, you know, you're always just making those adjustments. But that's what I mean, too. Like, um, just being able to adjust because you're going to have to constantly adjust. One, one thing isn't just going to work all the time. Like, sometimes you will have to adjust it and that becomes the new thing. But that's just for the moment. And it's all just about being in the moment. Sometimes we like to think about the moment of the moment. You know, us in the moment and and what that moment means. But, you know, the greatest moments just comes from the ones that you're just able to be in and live in and experience in. And and knowing that um, you can plan, you can strategize. But when it comes down to it, like, sometimes you just have to be in the moment. And that's what I want to master. I I just want to master being here, being present. Because even even 
even when we've done all this planning, when we've done all this strategic thinking, when we've done all this lay layout layer, you know, you know, putting things in, in schematics and, and everything, you know, uh, one of our biggest regrets is that we couldn't tap into the moment and, and see things for what they were. You know, a fear that we missed out on something because because we had been too busy planning or too busy trying to do something, you know. Um, but in reality, you were right where you needed to be. You were right where you needed to be because you existed in that moment. Just like you're existing in this one. And that's the special thing about it. I, I feel like I've said this before or, or something similar in a, in a different um, episode, but it's a reminder. <laughs> you know, as I move through life, I may not do things that make the other people happy, but what's important is that I'm in the moment. What's important is that they're in the in the moment, in the present moment. What's important is that you're in the moment. Because if you're in the moment, you're 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 able to find out things when they need to be find found out about. You know, not too far in the past, not too far in the future. You're just right here. Just be right here. And that is all that is required of you. Look, man, look. Monks, even monks dedicate their whole life just to try, just trying to be in the moment. You know, so don't ever think that, you know, th this is a thing that is just on the back burner or, or is just going to go away. You have what it takes to figure things out in, in real time. Um, don't be too harsh on yourself. Just be in the moment and it'll come. We come up with some of our best answers when we're not actively thinking about the thing that we're worrying about. Some of the best ideas may come to you when you're not, you know, doing the thing. And that's because you're not thinking about it. And when you're not thinking about it, you're allowing things to just happen automatically. And that's another thing, realizing that you're, you're more, you're a really automatic being. You're an automatic being. It's so funny because, you know, we see all these instances of like great athletes, politicians, you know, and, and, and you know, people, people that we know and respect, you know, like these, these grand people, these people that we have high respect for be blindsided by something so minuscule and it's like maybe if they were in a moment it, it wouldn't have been a problem you know and they they might hate them you know they might get upset at themselves for not achieving a goal you know in, in that time but as long as they're in the moment who who cares <laughs> who cares you know, I'm I'm thinking about the state of the world today, e even with all this, you know, st stuff, you know, uh, in involving surrounding this this one guy. I don't want to say his name. I feel like, you know, his name has been in the press already. But, you know, I I think about all the lives um, that this guy has touched, and I think about just. All of the people who, who you know, who compromised and, you know, felt like they had to sacrifice their integrity um, to be in certain, you know, parts of the industry. And they had to go through this guy. 
And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, what, what was it worth it to them? Was it worth it, you know, compromising who they were and, you know, their integrity to, to be in that position? What, was that exchange worth it? Or, you know, do do they have regrets about, you know, their, their whole journey? You know. So, you know, I... I I I pray for everybody. I pray for everybody. You know, because e- even though we do wrong for long periods of time, and, and and we can and you know we're identified by our actions. Um, we acquire new den- new identities every second. You know. to the point where we might just be talking about ghosts now. (laughs) But, but, you know, that's just the essence of time. Time is fleeting. Time is of the essence and the essence is fleeting. Time is of the essence and time is fleeting. You know. We just got to feel what we need to feel. And and, 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 and and continue observing. You know. But that's all I got for everybody. Hopefully I could uh <laughs> I I could put this somewhere. But um thank you for listening to me for about <laughs> thirty minutes and some change. I hope everybody's having a great day, a great evening, a great morning, wherever you are in the world. Um, God bless you. God bless you. Take care.